usually decaffeinated coffees are roasted darker so that we come close to regular coffee. There is no such thing that decaf and regular they taste the same. They might taste in the in the aftertaste, but in caffeine content, of course, decaf because there is less caffeine. We use only water processed decaf and we roast darker to enhance, to bring that flavor out, to come close to French roast. There is no such thing that this is for espresso. This is not for espresso. You can take any coffee that is roasted dark and you can make your espresso. I have certain coffees that they are not dark roasted espresso, but it is very tasty when you make espresso. If you go, if you taste coffee, espresso, if you drink espresso from southern Italy, for example, if you look at the beans, they are light roast, not very dark. But if you go to northern Italy, the coffee, if you look at it for their espresso, it's more dark. So it's a matter of taste. And you can take any coffee or any blend of coffee, roasted dark, you can make your espresso. It's a matter of the taste how much crema you like, or how much nuttiness you want, how much bitterness you want. We think that, or the public thinks that, a strong coffee or espresso has a lot of caffeine inside, which is the other way around. A cup of coffee has more caffeine and a shot of espresso, because the extraction of that coffee is faster, so the caffeine content is less. But the taste is st strong because we have taken darker roast, we have done extraction fast, and we drink concentrated this much. And that's why some lot of people, including myself, I enjoy it. This is my third roasting machine. This machine does uh, between 80 to 100 pounds an hour. We roast daily between two to 300 pounds a day. And it's a very efficient uh, machine. Uh, the grounds, they go up here, we store it. As the temperature is correct, we program the machine so that each bean has needs different temperature. And then we start roasting. Once it is roasted, it's done. We open the gate, the coffee, they come over here, and then it rotates, the fan blows down, we cool the machine. And then when it is cool enough to handle, we store it in the can. Each batch, we write down and we log. We write down the temperature, when we start, when we finish, what was the temperature, because each, each bean needs different temperature. So we program or we adjust the, the heat according to that bean temperature requirement. I make that decision. There is no such thing law saying that we roast at 400 degrees, this Colombian you roast at 400, Sumatra you roast for 30, things like that. There is no such thing. I make that decision. What temperature I do? Just like a chef. The chef, you give him a piece of meat, he cuts a slice, and he tries to make a steak for you. He makes a decision how to steak it, how to cook that steak. I do the same thing. I make that decision. Certain temperature. After it's all done, we taste and we log in. I log in all my roasting so that next time when the customer comes says, on Wednesday, I like your coffee. 
or on Wednesday I bought some Colombian, I didn't like it. I asked him why we didn't like it. And then he describes me, thinking that I might have done wrong. I go back on my chart, I look, I think, I said, ah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. But if he's correct, I look and I say, oh, I see what it means, because here we have kept the beam too long and we have over rusted. So next time I better play closer attention not to do that, not to repeat. But 99.9%, .9%, my logs is constant all the time. We measure and we taste after each bean that we do. And 99%, my roasting is done. And we always come to the point that customer they really enjoy. It's fresh, still warm, it's empty. So I have to fill it up so that the customer comes and we sell it to them. I don't have, I don't have three days old, I don't have cow. All my cows are fresh.